The European Collapse Radiation and Contaminated Region Recovery and Revitalization Joint Development Agreement, or simply the European Collapse Recovery Agreement, is an agreement between various states to cooperate and coordinate efforts to cleanse collapse radiation affected areas for the purpose of eventual repopulation of human civilization, as well as other non elid infected flora and fauna. The European Collapse Recovery Agreement utilizes various technologies to not only detect and monitor for collapse radiation, but also slowly but surely cleanse areas of said radiation. One such technology is the self-mobile purification towers, which purify the local areas around themselves and are capable of being moved to other areas needed for purification. Another important technology are mobile walls composed of wall trains. These are essentially mobile borders used to protect purified zones from elid infected and high concentrations of collapsed radiation either on the ground or produced by radiation storms. The European Collapse Recovery Agreement designates various zones indicating its progress in purifying collapse radiation and rebuilding human civilization. These zones are as follows, from safest to the most dangerous. White zones, green zones, purification zones, yellow zones, red zones, and black zones. White zones, or safety zones, are zones in which the European Collapse Recovery Agreement has successfully purified all collapse and elid contamination, rendering radiation levels at zero. Critical regions for economic, governmental, or military activities are contained within white zones. White zones are furnished with full suites of collapse radiation warning systems, pollution prevention, and safeguarding countermeasures to prevent or respond to any collapse radiation presence within the zone. Generally speaking, white zones are akin to a modern city, albeit with more extensive health and safety measures. Green zones, or extension zones, are zones in which purification efforts are complete or near complete, indicated by the subcategory of primary and non-primary, designating priority. Primary green zones refers to areas which were exposed to milder collapse radiation contamination and are not considered worthy of large-scale resource injections for management and construction by the government. Primary zones are generally sparsely populated and have little sign of human intervention with natural landscape dominating the area. Non-primary zones are by comparison more densely populated by humans and therefore show more significant signs of human intervention. These zones often feature various satellite cities with factories and farms also being commonplace. Non-primary zone populations are typically determined by the needs of the corresponding white zones. Due to the possible presence of mild collapse radiation and elid within green zones, it is required that all residents living in these zones be implanted with biochips containing their biological information and social data especially should they work within white zones and travel between purification zones and yellow zones. Non-primary zones are also known to have high populations of bounty hunters, black market merchants, and private military companies, which often operate in yellow and red zones passing through purification zones in order to enter them. Purification zones are a narrow band of territory located between the yellow zones and green zones, classified as undergoing purification by the European Collapse Recovery Agreement. These zones serve as a representation of the agreement's new westward movement and its ultimate goal of purifying all of Europe. Collapse radiation in these zones vary depending on the purification progress within a given area typically falling somewhere between yellow and green zone levels. Having no permanent populations, these zones are primarily occupied by military forces occupying the various wall trains protecting the purification towers from any encroaching elid infection, as well as processing any seeking to pass into green zones, such as the various bounty hunters and PMCs based in green zones but operating in yellow and red zones. Military forces will also patrol these zones for added protection. Signs of previous human civilization and intervention still exist in various states within these zones. Structures deemed well-preserved or necessary are often occupied by the military, 
and reclaimed after purification procedures. Structures deemed too damaged for recovery will be demolished and scheduled for replacement. These zones are generally dominated by natural landscapes similar to yellow and red zones. However, these zones show more signs of non-collapse affected flora and fauna recovery. Yellow zones, or frontier zones, are regions which still need to undergo purification in accordance with the European Collapse Recovery Agreement, but have not been completed as of yet. Collapse radiation density within these zones is relatively low, but humans need to wear protective garments while traversing through these zones. However, dolls do not require any protection and can move freely. We will be returning to the topic of said protective garments at a later point. Yellow zones environments are primarily dominated by dead trees, swamps, and desert. Desertification is a severe problem in these zones, and areas with plentiful underground water have become swamp regions, although oases exist in valleys and other such water-rich areas. The terrain is made up primarily of rolling hills with few flat areas. The weather is either abnormal or similar to more contaminated regions. Within more contaminated regions of yellow zones, collapse radiation storms can form. Regions which suffer frequently from collapse storms tend to exhibit small-scale surface civilization, as well as the growth of small quantities of collapse epiphyllum flower clusters. Despite this, however, yellow zones are populated by various residents such as ordinary citizens and members of the Vagar clan. Bounty hunters and PMCs operate within these zones as well. Elid infected are known to occasionally roam the region, but not in high quantities, making them generally more manageable for the local human populace. Yellow zones also contain various remnants of past human structures. Some smaller towns previously abandoned remain in usable states and can be reoccupied if not too damaged. These towns are reported to contain an abundance of abandoned supplies. However, any residents will need to draw on underground water sources over 100 meters deep for safe consumption. The European Collapse Recovery Agreement has distributed purification towers throughout these zones. Most of the towers near the green zones are intact and functional, while towers closer to the red zone are typically reported to be damaged or destroyed. Red zones, or contaminated zones, are zones designated by the European Collapse Recovery Agreement as high priority areas for focus on the implementation of purification and treatment of collapse radiation. There appears to be remnants of various military and early purification attempt activities in these zones, although all seem to be destroyed. Most human structures within these zones have undergone extensive damage and there are few traces of any recent human activity. Red zones are far too dangerous for any humans to live within, but there have been reports of unidentified humans seemingly living within them anyways. The concentration of elid infected in these zones is high due to the proximity to black zones. While primarily made up of desert Due to the frequency of collapse, radiation storms, and soil erosion, these zones also feature little flora, ravines, and varying degrees of silification throughout. In especially low-lying areas, some flora can still be found. One such example is epiphyllum. Although these types of vegetation seem harmless at first during the flowering period, they will essentially eject all of the gathered collapse radiation from the local area, which will cause a sharp increase in collapse radiation in the affected areas. Other types of flora can be found as well, with each sharing distinctive features such as color and appearance in different parts of the zone. Red zones contain a high concentration of collapse radiation and as such will require protective equipment for both dolls and humans traversing within. The Black Zone, also known as Ground Zero, is the location of the source of collapse radiation. 
caused by an incident related to relic sites and technology leading to an explosion and the resulting outpour of collapsed radiation. Black zones are self-evidently highly irradiated and therefore it is inadvisable to enter these areas as even protective equipment will be ineffective and chances of survival is extremely low. Based on observations of these zones, there is a very high concentration of eolid infected surrounding the main blast site and small clusters of mutated flora. There is evidence of past research buildings prior to the incident and various tower-like structures containing entry to relic sites of the ancient civilizations. The blast site itself appears to have collapsed into a funnel-like shape, with its center being ground zero. The surface soil closest to ground zero was vertified mid-flight by high temperatures and the explosion shockwave, which has subsequently led to the surface being swathed with sharp, black, crystalline objects. The region around Ground Zero features primarily wasteland and generally difficult, rocky terrain. These zones are also the common origin point for collapsed storms and are more frequently beset by them than any other zones. It must be emphasized yet again that entering black zones is highly inadvisable due to its various lethal dangers. While the European Collapse Recovery Agreement intends to purify this zone eventually, it is currently highly unlikely that they will be able to do so, and as such, it is considered a low priority. If one must venture into zones affected by collapse radiation, a well-known method of protection from said radiation and the elid infection is to utilize the weight-bearing conformal external assistance system. Designed with functionality in mind, they minimize encumbrance on the user and feature multiple mounting points for equipment. This purpose-made exoskeleton is especially built to protect the wearer from collapse radiation and therefore elid infection. Both T-Dolls and humans are capable of utilizing the weight-bearing system. Using the weight-bearing system is necessary when traversing through specific contamination zones designated by the European Collapse Recovery Agreement. It is necessary for humans to wear weight-bearing equipment within both yellow and red zones. However, dolls do not require the equipment within yellow zones. It is also required to utilize weight-bearing equipment when exploring relic sites Weight-bearing equipment will however not function as intended within black zones, as the collapse radiation concentration is too high for it to provide any real protection. I hope this information will provide you with a better understanding of the European Collapse Radiation Contaminated Region Recovery and Revitalization Joint Development Agreement, and its zone categorization and priorities as well as technology and precautions one must use to protect themselves from the dangers of collapse radiation and elid infection.